Good morning, everyone. This, this song is a key to getting a miracle, a breakthrough, change in your life. That when God says something, you can believe it and see the results. When God said, let there be light, there was light. When Jesus said, Lazarus, and he was in a tomb dead for four days. And then Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. You know what happened? He came forth. When, when there was a day that the disciples and Jesus were in a boat and Jesus, they got in that boat because it was a Jesus idea. And this is what Jesus said, hey, everybody get in a boat. We're going to the other side. We're going to the other side. Now, in the middle of that transition, going from one side to the next, they ran into a severe storm. And that's what happens to many of us. We have dreams, we have visions, but there's a process to get to the other side and then you run into obstacles, you run into difficulties, or you run into a storm and you think, did I miss it? No, you didn't miss it, you're just in transition. If God said we're going to the other side, I know right now it looks rocky, it might look overwhelming, it might look like I don't think I'm going to get through this. And there might even be a spirit of depression and suicide that's visiting you. But just because it's visiting you doesn't mean that you need to make a room for it to stay. You have to go back to the Word of God and say, no, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get to the other side. Come on. The other side is better than the side you just came from. God's not taking you to a worse place. He's taking, come on, he's graduating you. He's taking you to a place of maturity, growth, greater effectiveness, greater peace. Give God some praise because if he says it and you believe it, you can have it. If he says it and you believe it, you can have it. Now, in that transition that they're going to the other side, this, we see a, it's like a movie and I could just see the camera, the water's coming into the boat, the disciples are freaking out and they're getting, they're getting their hats or the pails and trying to empty the boat. We're drowning, right? But, and then it focuses on Jesus and he's sleeping. Same storm, the disciples are freaking out and Jesus is sleeping. How can Jesus sleep in the middle of a storm, a hurricane, because he knows what he already said. So he has peace. He goes, we're, didn't I say we're going to the other side? I know there's a storm. I knew that was going to happen too. Just because there's a storm doesn't mean we're not going. Stop allowing the storm to be your evidence and let the word of God be your evidence. Come on, does anybody believe he said it? I believe it. Say, sing that part, of, that part again. Because he said it, I believe it. Because I like that part right there. That's like, I, I like the If he said it, we believe it. You're oh, a yeah. man. super important statement. Um, the Bible says this, I want you to check this out, that there's no other name to call on, a name to call on. And when you get in trouble, some of us call on your mommy. Come on, everybody, mom, right? Some of us for the first time in our life, you might be an atheist until you're in big trouble. And they say, God, God, Jesus. But the Bible says, there's no other name given to men and women 
to be saved, to be made whole, to be rescued for real. That one name, and the name is Jesus. Come on, he can rescue you, he can restore you, he can set you free. Let's give the Lord one more big hand because he's a good God. If you said it, we believe it. I love that. Oh, here, here we go. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. Oh, man. There we go. One more time. One more time. Oh, here we go. If you said it, we believe it. Good. We're going to pray. And we're, we're in a series called Guaranteed Growth. And all it means is that God has created you to grow. You should not die just barely surviving. You should die at your highest level of growth. You know what that means? That your best days aren't behind you. You're not a used to be. You're ready to be greater than you've ever been. The greatest works that God wants to do in your life are not back there. They're up here. They're somewhere over there. Uh, you, were, you were created to grow. And that's why you start off in your mother's womb. And then you come out. And then you grow. And when you're a little boy or a little girl, you have dreams and aspirations to become someone that you're not. I'm here, but I'm going there. That's called vision. And for some of us, you get beat up by life so much that you've given up your dreams, your hopes. And someone asks you, where are you going? Where are you headed? You'd be like, I don't know. All I could just focus on my failures, my shortcomings. I don't see a good day coming. And you know what that's called? Being hopeless. And that's the spirit that blinds you of your future. God wants you to have a vision of growth. And we're going to find out how to get guaranteed growth. But we're going to talk about a real strong perspective about what Jesus looks at as real growth. And we're going to see how to get that kind of growth, spiritual growth in our lives. So we get it and we can give, some, give it to somebody else. You guys get that? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We have these next few moments, and I'm asking you, Lord, to give me the wisdom on how to get through these scriptures in a way that everyone understands it, in a way that we could apply it, that we could know you better, understand who we are, that our identity may be in you and the purpose you have for our lives, that our identity will not be in the things that we own, the titles that we carry, but it would be in our relationship with you and your purpose for our life. You said, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. That means we will see ourselves as your children, which, which is our identity. And then we'd say, that kingdom come, that will be done. And we would say, I live to fulfill your purpose. And if I would do that, everything else I've ever wanted in life, you'd give it to me. So we just thank you, Lord. Speak to us today, Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go through a study here on growth, guaranteed growth, and I will start with the definition of guarantee. Um, I like things with a guarantee, like it's going to work 100%. I don't want something that might work. I want to know it will work. Now, God's given us his word, and the Bible says, the Bible says that his word, his instructions, his commands, his principles do not return back void or empty. What that means, when God writes a check, it doesn't bounce. That means what I say, I'm going to do, I will do. If we trust in the principles of God, the word of God, the instructions of God, and we actually apply it, we're, we're, we're guaranteed 
results. We're guaranteed growth. The word guarantee means this for sure, certain, definite, assurance of a particular outcome, a promise. I don't want to go through life hoping and wishing. And the reason hoping and wishing is not good because you're always vulnerable to outside attacks, what people are saying, because you're looking at the physical realm. And God is saying, if you take your eyes off the physical, what people are saying, and the economy, and your failures, and your shortcomings, and put them on me and my promises, you'll become stable emotionally, mentally. You'll have some faith because you know this. I might, not, I might be flaky at times, but God is not. Even when I'm unfaithful, he's faithful. And I'm standing on a guaranteed promise in his word. If I call on Jesus, for sure I'm saved. It's an example. But guaranteed for sure growth. Say it with me, growth. The word growth means increase. It means prosperity, success, expansion, fruitfulness, multiplication, maturity, improvement. It means building. God has created us that everywhere we go that we would cause increase. That things would improve as a result of our input or our involvement. We've come to San Bernardino, which is the second poorest large city in the country, and we came here into neighborhoods, really tough neighborhoods, and we came to bring growth, guaranteed growth. And we did it by finding needs and meeting them. And we knew that love never fails. Say it with me, love never fails. Hate does, but love never fails. We went into neighborhoods and that we didn't know the people, but we could apply love. And we did it practically. That means if there was somebody hungry, we didn't pray for them and say, I hope you get some food. We loved them and we'd go buy groceries for them, give them groceries, and they got a message, God loves me. He loved me enough to bring some groceries. We found someone that didn't have a fridge in, in my neighborhood that I was walking the block. And I found out there was four or five ladies living in a home with a whole bunch of kids and they didn't have a fridge, they didn't have a stove. I don't pray, God, give them a fridge, God, give them a so stove. Love never fails. Love is more than a feeling, it's an action. I had money to buy him a fridge and a stove, so what did I do? I went and bought him a fridge and a stove and I said, Jesus loves you, we love you too. And what ended up happening as a result of that it was guaranteed growth. We went and did that in 12 blocks. Every week visited, I visited senior citizens that never had a, a visit for months, sometimes years. That means there were senior citizens that their kids no longer visited them. They were like abandoned living in a home all by themselves when no one cared for them. They were lonely. And I knew I could show some love. Love never fails. It's guaranteed to cause growth. I could just go there on a weekly basis and have a little tea. I could bring some ladies over and clean up the house a little bit. I could get some guys to mow the lawn. These are practical things I could do. And, I, and God was telling me, love the people. And where there's love, there will be gain. Without love, there's no profit. But if you love them, it's guaranteed to grow. So we just love them. And people started asking us, um, where's your church? I go, we don't have one. I go, but when we do, would you come? And everyone started saying yes. And we had 500 people that came from the neighborhood, the prostitutes, the drug dealers, come on, the senior citizens, the people from the neighborhood. They all came to church. 400 of them got saved because God, love never fails and always produces Profit. Is that good? It's guaranteed to cause growth. Now, Jesus gave every believer the same growth mission. Every single person actually on earth has this mission that God has given you. And the mission, I'm going to tell you right now, but it has to do with people. Your mission is not personal wealth and personal gain. It's nothing wrong with getting personal wealth and personal gain and nice things. But if it just ends with you, that's not purpose. If you're saying, I want to be blessed so I could be a blessing, that's a whole nother 
a whole other context of, of wealth. Wealth to be a blessing is wonderful. But God has given us a mission, every single believer. And before Jesus, after Jesus died, he rose from the dead, he spent 40 days with his disciples and gave them last minute instructions. And this is a real familiar verse. And in this verse, we know the mission of every believer and how to do it. In Matthew 28, 19, he says, go then to all peoples. Where do we go to what? To all people. Everywhere. And make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So now he's given instructions. I want you to make disciples. And when you make disciples, people commit to being a disciple. Baptize them. And teach them. And teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And I will be, all, I will be with you always to the end of the age. What he's saying, if you would accept this mission... How many watch Mission Impossible movies? And they give that little recording, and then they start off the, the movie every time with the little recording, if you choose to accept this mission. But it's going to destruct in 30 seconds. Right? There's a new Mission Impossible movie coming out pretty soon, and, and it always ends with an impossible mission that actually happens. And people say, well, how, how did he fly out of the plane with no parachute and land on two feet as he jumped on top of a car in the middle of the, middle of the sky? How does he do that? It's in the script. And God is just saying, you can do the impossible because it's already in the script. You win, it's in the script. Come on, you're victorious, it's in the script. You can make disciples, it's in the script. There's nothing I'm telling you to do that you can't do. I'm giving you your script. I love it. He goes, I'm the author and finisher of your faith. What God is saying, I got a plan for your life. You're not a mistake. Stop trying to live according to your own rules, your own ways. You're messing up your life. Why don't you come back and look at the script, adjust your life to the word of God, accept God's mission over your life, and you'll find joy, peace, victory, purpose, freedom, and a reason to live. So question what is the mission of every believer? Every single believer has the same exact mission. Be a disciple of Jesus Christ and make disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't say, follow me as a fan. Follow me as a member. Follow me, he said, as my disciple. Are there any disciples of Jesus Christ here. So you guys, some of were raising their hand because you thought, you, you're, you knew where I was going with this. I might have said disciples of the devil. And you would be like, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Because the reality is either you're a disciple of Jesus or you're a disciple of the devil. Pastor, don't break it down like that. You're hurting my feelings. Well, how do you know you're a disciple like of the devil? You act more like him every day. You're a liar, you're a hater, you're a gossiper, um, you, you act just like him. Because whoever you're a disciple of, you become more like. Amen. Don't, don't get mad, we're just going through this scripture. So be a disciple of Jesus Christ and make disciples of Jesus Christ is all of our mission. And that word disciple, let's go over that word for just a second. It's one who has committed to follow Jesus through the process of being discipled, diligently studying the word of God and obeying all that it teaches. I'm going to just want to stop there for a second. It's one who has, has committed to following Jesus. No one is going to be an accident, an accident disciple of Jesus. You're not going to go to heaven and say, I didn't even know I was a disciple. I was? You only become a disciple of Jesus Christ or a follower of Jesus Christ if you make the choice and respond to the call. So Jesus makes disciples simply the same way he's always done it. Hey, follow me and unfollow that. Many people don't want to follow Jesus because they don't want to unfollow what they're following. You can't follow Jesus and follow drugs. You can't follow Jesus and follow an adulterous affair. 
You can't follow Jesus and follow unforgiveness and hate. I hate that person. Oh, I wish they were dead. <laughs> you can't follow Jesus and follow religion. You have to make a decision. I want to follow Jesus. Follow me. And you have to say, I'll follow you. Now, we don't just follow him, like I said, a fan. We follow him through a process of being discipled and mentored. I come to him as a student. So following Jesus, is we follow Jesus by studying his word and obeying all he teaches. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a student of the word of God. You're not just a student of the word of God, you obey its teachings. The word of God is the mind of God. The word of God is Jesus. Every day I want to become more like Jesus, not more like Facebook, not more like Instagram, not more like a, a, from the TikTok or whatever you're exposing yourself to. God is saying some of you need to unfollow all that stuff so you can begin to follow me. You've not tuned in to me. You have no time for my word. And if you just make time, you could become a disciple. Obey. The goal of every disciple of Jesus Christ is to know him better. To know him better. Become like him and carry out his mission of making disciples. The goal is I want to know Jesus better. I want to become more like him in thought, habit, action, character. And I want to make disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the goal of every single disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we carry out this assignment? We carry out this assignment by following instructions. I want to just give you three growth statements Say it with me, growth statements. The first statement is kind of defining what Jesus calls growth. What Jesus calls growth. And growth statement number one, growth happens every time a disciple of Jesus Christ makes a disciple of Jesus Christ. This statement defines Jesus' definition of growth. The early church saw the numbers of disciples continue to increase greatly. See, when we are focused on the mission that Jesus has given us, and passionately pursue it, we will see growth. You'll never have growth in an area you're not intentional about. You'll never have growth in an area that you don't desperately desire to see growth in. The early church heard the mission to make disciples, and they not only pursued it, they were passionate about it. And because they were passionate about it, they saw success. The greatest thing I could do as a father is not provide a physical inheritance to my five girls. The greatest thing I could provide for my daughters is pass on my faith to them. You guys understand that? Everything else that we do on earth stays here. The only thing that you're going to transfer into eternity are the disciples that you made. What a shame to give your kids the nice car, give them the college education, give them the best sports equipment, get them the nicest tennis shoes they could have, and then their soul is lost for eternity. All because we never took the assignment to make disciples serious, and the assignment to make disciples must start in our homes. And you might be thinking, my kids are more like the devil. It's okay. It doesn't need to end up that way. You can start right now taking your assignment. It's not too late. That's why God has brought you here. God said, we're going to turn this ship around. We're going to turn your family around. I specialize in hard heads. Come on. I specialize in the stubborn. I specialize in the addict. If you'll just start believing in me and accept my assignment, I'm the one that makes some disciples. I'm the one that saves them. I'm the one that sets them free. I'm the one that restores them. I just need you to accept the assignment and pursue it. Put some action to it. In Acts 6, 7, look what it says. The message of God kept on growing and spreading. This is after Jesus gives the mission of every believer. Make disciples. Be a disciple, make disciples. And the message kept God, of God kept on growing and spreading. And the number of disciples continued 
to increase greatly. The numbers of disciples continued to increase what? Were they any different than us? There were just people like us focused on a mission that God gave them. And because they were focused, focused and passionate and began to move in that direction and teach the word of God, the result was disciples were made. How do you make disciples? One of the ways that you make disciples, you cannot make a disciple of Jesus Christ without becoming a teacher of the word. No one's going to get saved without hearing the word, hearing the good news. It's time to get Jesus on our lips. Speak about Jesus. And when you start speaking about Jesus, how he saves, how he loves, how he forgives, and how he died for sinners like you and me, that you could be forgiven. And God, that Jesus didn't come to judge you, but he came to give you life. And he came to give you life in abundance. And he came to forgive you. And he came to give you eternal life. As they hear it, they can believe it and become disciples. God uses regular people with his message in their mouth to do miracles in other people's lives. The convincing and the saving God does, what we do is just share. Right? Someone say, just share. Share your story. I'm so glad that you're here. Because right now you, you went to church or you go to church, but it doesn't end here. We go to church and then we go to the world, the mission field. And we share our story. Come on, share what Jesus can do. Right? They accepted the mission and they saw disciples. Now, growth comes with instructions. So when Jesus says go make disciples, he gave them clear instructions how to do it. I want to give you another growth statement. Growth happens every time we obey his instructions. We got to stop butting God out and just do what he says. Maybe you're not unlucky, you're just disobedient. Well, it just seemed like I'm so unlucky. God said, nah, it's not a luck thing. It's an application thing. And God's word is not prejudice. So what I'm waiting for that is God's blessing, God word, God's word works for everybody. If it's applied. Stop comparing yourself to other people. There's nobody like you. You were created, you're God's masterpiece. You're very unique. God has a plan for your life. And God says, if you'll just obey me, you will grow, you will cause growth, and you will see prosperity and success in your life. You're just instructions away. I love that. God blesses obedience with guaranteed growth. God blesses obedience with what? Guaranteed growth. In Leviticus 26.3, it says this. This is what I will do for you. This is what I will do if you will live by my laws and carefully obey my commands. This is what I'll do for you. Think about a meeting with God right now. He meets with you in the living room of your house. He said, turn off the TV. I want to talk to you. I'm ready to do something awesome in your life. But I need to get your attention because what I'm ready to do comes with instructions. Do you know I'm proud of every one of you because... You're here today in church. You know what you're saying? God's first in my life. The first day of the week, the first hours of the day, I'm going to give to Jesus. I got enough hell all week long. I'm going to start off by putting God first. I don't care how bad Saturday night was, how bad this week was. Every single Sunday, I come to the house of God and I come to receive instructions and get an alignment. Does anybody need an alignment of your emotions and your mind and your life? And say, right now, I need a tune-up. I need a restart. I need a new beginning. And every Sunday, God gives us that opportunity. And here, you're hearing the word of God and your life and your thinking and your actions and your future and your destiny is changing because you've exposed yourself to the word and instructions of God. And if you do it, you're going to start seeing guaranteed growth in your life. This is not an accident. This is not luck. This is application. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> if God said it, <laughs> if God said it, 
I believe it because he going to do it. This is what I will do for you. Like to say, say with it. This is what God, God will do for me. Well, I love this. Let's turn this around. If you will obey my laws and carefully obey my commands, I will give you the rain at the right time. The land will produce its crops and the trees in the field will produce their fruit. This is what God is saying. If you just follow my instructions, I will give you supernatural ability to be fruitful. I'll give you everything that you need to grow. You do what I tell you and I'll do what you can't do. You can't make rain, but I can. You can't make a seed, but I can make it grow. All I need you to do is plant, you water, you do what I tell you, and I will produce the growth. God is saying one plants, another waters, but God's saying I'm the one that causes the growth. And if you'll just obey his word, you'll start experiencing growth. You know why you're full of fear? Because you're not full of faith. Pastor, that's deep. Well, that means, you know why you're full of fear? Because you have, you're, you're, your faith is not based on anything but what you see. But if you could have the faith to obey God's word, and know this, if I obey God's word, rain's coming. Come on, harvest is coming. Victory is coming. Breakthrough is coming. How do I know? I'm following God's instructions and God does not lie. What he said he will accomplish. My best days are behind me because now I have a new leader. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Don't get this twisted. Amen. Success and growth is a byproduct of obedience. Growth always comes with instructions. All we need to do is follow instructions and we will see guaranteed growth and success. Joshua 1 look what it says. Never stop reciting these teachings. Never stop what? First of all, if you're going to recite the teachings, you must be studying the teachings. I think nowadays we're so busy with nonsense we don't got enough time to fill ourselves with the word to begin even to recite because we're, we can't recite what God, the word of God, the teachings of God, because we're not exposed enough to studying the word of God, memorizing the word of God, meditating on the word of God, because we're filling our lives with a whole bunch of cotton candy. Cotton candy, what you talking about? Your social media. Look at this cat play the piano. Gink, 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 and you're like, oh my God. I never seen a cat. <laughs> you're so concerned about what the Kardashians are doing, you don't have a life. You're so concerned about what your favorite at LeBron's doing, you got no game. You're not even in the game. But I'm a fan. He don't pay you nothing. Every time he slam dunk, break records, you get nothing. And God is saying, I got a life for you. Come on. You were created to be a superstar. If you just start following my instructions, people will start seeking after you because you're a source of growth. You're a source of deliverance. You're a source of healing. You're a source of, come on, encouragement. It's time for you to stop being in the victim line and start getting in the victor line. And all you got to do is say, Jesus, you're my dis you disciple me. I follow your instructions. Yes, sir. Never stop reciting these teachings. You must think about them day, night, and day. What? Yeah. He's not like, he's not saying like, you kind of need to do this. He's not like exaggerating. He's saying if you're going to start being successful and you start being growth, you're going to have to have a mindset consumed with his word. And that means you're going to have to turn off other stuff so you can start listening to the word. You might need to listen to this sermon ten times before you finally build some faith to start producing in your life. 
You might, you might have to cancel YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. You don't need to see people dancing like crazy and twerking in front of you. It's not going to make you spiritual. Like, oh my gosh, look at her twerk. Because the more you feed yourself with that, the more fleshy you become. And your mind begins, see, I want you to understand, your mind begins to begin to be consumed. Your conversations begin to be consumed with what you're eating on, what you're feeding on, and what you're thinking about you start acting on. And what God is saying, if you just start thinking of my word and start reciting my word day and night, it just get consumed with my word, I guarantee you this. Everything that you do will begin to prosper if and only if you do this. You must think about them day and night so that you, so that you will faithfully do everything written in them. What you're thinking about is what you're ready to do. Only then will you prosper and succeed. You know what I love about the word of God? You don't have to be smart. You just have to be obedient. You don't have to be smart. Just obey. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I just obey. I know I'm dumb enough to mess it up. I'm not self-made. I'm God-made. They say, well, well, how do you do it, Pastor? How do you get so effective? Oh, I want some of that anointing. Can you just pray for me and drop a little? <laughs> I'm not going to drop it on you. I'm going to train you to be. All I do is just hear the word and obey the word. God says, make disciples. I go and make disciples. And I, I know I do that. Prosperity is there. Victory is there. Advancement is there. Growth is there. Come on. Peace is there. Joy is there. Freedom is there. Hear the word and live it. Thank you, Jesus. And growth statement number three. I guess that's all I could cover, man. Now, Growth statement number two was really simple. Growth happens every time we obey his instructions. Jesus gave instructions, very simple instructions. Go make disciples of all nations. First thing you got to do is you got to go. And we'll cover that in a second. Then you got to make disciples. And then, and then you got to depend on the Holy Spirit to do what you can't do. This is a move of God. God's the one that saves people. He's the one that changes people. Stop getting intimidated by their sin. Well, I don't see how they could ever change. God says, that, see, what's impossible for you is possible for me. I specialize in saving sinners. I don't see how they're going to turn around. You don't have to see how they're going to turn around. You just obey, make disciples, teach them the word of God, invite them to come to church. You do your part and let God do the miracles. Come on, amen. Now, growth statement number three, which is really a non-growth statement. Disobedience to God's commands leads to guaranteed failure and not growth. Don't trick yourself into thinking that you're going to do it your way. And just because society is doing it that way, be careful that you don't become a worldly Christian. You got to be careful that you, that you don't become a woke Christian. That you're thinking like them. It's just society. Forget about society. It's the word of God. We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. His standards don't change. Come on. His moral, come on, his morals don't change. His values don't change. And his word doesn't change. Now, we're good at convincing ourselves that what we're, what, what we're doing is right. I could convince myself to commit adultery on Lisa. I just start, I just start, uh, she did not cook this week. hungry. I'm really hungry. I'm tired of fast food. And if she loved me, <laughs> the least she could do is cook once a week. And then the girl at work brings me lunch. You know, I was just thinking about you. You were in my heart the other day. And I don't know. Are you hungry? <laughs> yes, I am. This must be a sign. Yeah, a sign of the devil. And then, and then me and her get in an argument this week. 
And she calls me a scoundrel, you little scoundrel. I don't even know what that is, but she calls me that. <laughs> you, need, you need to straighten up. You're always, always complaining about me not cooking. You know, God gave you two hands. Why don't you cook yourself? <laughs> Chef Borardi, why don't you get... Why? And I go, oh, no, she did. And the girl at work says, you know, ma'am, if I was your wife, you'd be my hero. I'd wash your feet when you come home. You need a massage? I went to massage school. Come here, come here, come, come, come here. Oh, that feels good. I wish my wife, you know, I know. And just because I justify committing adultery and I give you 10 reasons why I committed adultery doesn't make me right. I'm still in sin and I'm going to guarantee you this. It will end in failure. It will end in non-growth. You will go backwards. Sin never take progress, causes you to progress. Come on. Unforgiveness doesn't cause you to progress. Anger doesn't cause you to progress. Revenge doesn't cause you to progress. Gossip doesn't cause you to progress. Putting other people down doesn't cause you to progress. But obeying God's word causes you to guarantee progress and see growth and if you want to be disobedient you got one guarantee you're headed for failure and non-growth we'll end it with this scripture Psalms 107 3 and 4 or 34 he turned land that produced crops into a salty land what? God? Turn land that was producing into a land that was salty. And look what it said. Salty land where nothing could grow. So you're saying that God made a productive area unproductive? Why would he do that? Because the, Lord, the people who lived there were evil. I, I, I want you to get this. God has already cursed sin. When you get involved with sin, you're already under the curse. He doesn't curse you, he cursed the sin. And when you are walking in sin, everything you touch is cursed. There's no growth, it becomes salty, and this is what happens. Any progress you had, you lose it. Hmm. Because the people are evil. You know what that word evil means? Disobedient, unkind, Vicious, causing each other harm and injury. Don't think that you're going to be vicious with your mouth and have this wonderful blessed life. You are fooling yourself. You can't go around abusing people and hurting people. Well, it's the truth. Stop being, stop telling the truth and, and using truth as an excuse to damage people. The Bible says tell the truth in love. You don't tell the truth to abuse people, hurt people, put them down, destroy them. You use the word of God to build people. Come on. Yes, God could convict them, but it's all done through love. Someone say love some people. Some of us are so vicious, you actually do some mass murders with your mouth. You just don't kill one person. You kill like a ten people all at once. It's automatic. And I know this, if you're bitter towards one person, you're negative about one person, you become bitter as a person. Come on, let's be kind. Come on, let's be loving. So God gives us clear instructions. And these are the instructions he gives. Go to the people. Go to people everywhere. Someone say, go to the people. No one's coming to us. We need to go to them. And we go, we go in the neighborhoods. We're going to... Right now we go to Tijuana, we go to, we just came, our missionary team just came from a third world country. We're, we're, we're going because people need us. They need hope. We go and we meet people's needs. If people are hungry, we feed them. People are naked, we clothe. That's why we have a distribution center. All of us together are going together. Our reach together is farther than one person can reach. We're all doing this together. We're all serving together. We're all going to the herd. And I told you this and we ended with this. Uh, last week was, it was an interesting week. Last Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday, I'm driving to church. And I told you, some of you guys know this story, but I was driving to church at 6.30 in the morning. 
and I was driving to church. It was an accident in front of Walmart on Hallmark, which is this street here. And I just saw an SUV parked at an angle. I, I thought it was a little fender bender. And when I drove by, I saw a young man sitting on, I mean, laying on the ground, twisted up, bleeding. Like, like, he had like a gallon of blood coming from his head. The police weren't there. The ambulance weren't there. Nobody was there. It was just a, the young man that had a motorcycle hit the car. And there was a young girl that was sitting there. And then the, the guy that, he, that drove the SUV was there. That was it. So I pulled my car around. And, and I, I didn't know if the guy was dead or not. Everybody thought he was dead. But I went up to him, kneeled down in front of him, and when I kneeled down in front of him, I heard him breathing. <sighs> Strong. And I knew that the chances of him living were slim to none because he was mangled and bleeding really severely from his head. He had a helmet, but it's still bleeding. So I began to share the good news with him because God tells us to go. You know what go means? You go out of your comfort zone. You go out of your way. You go, you, come on, you, you go into a new conversation. You go to the streets. You go and you serve. No one's going to be reached if no one's willing to go. We got to stop being American Christians and start being biblical Christians. American Christians come to church for a better life. But come on, biblical Christians, come on, serve God to learn. They come to church to go out there and make a difference in this world. And God has created you to walk with power, walk with the greatest message in the world that gives eternal life. You were created to do some great works. And all you have to do is say, yes, I want to be a disciple. Then you have to be willing to go. And make disciples is simple. That word make means teach. We need to become teachers again. You need to stop letting YouTube raise your kids. Stop, being their, stop letting YouTube be their babysitter because they're going to have a mindset of the world full of demons. Some of the stuff that's actually being poured into your children that you're not watching is demonic. And the only thing that can fight against that is you teach them. Let's start making disciples. Someone needs some mentoring. Come on, there's kids out there that need a father, a mother figure in their lives. And God is saying, will you take someone underneath your wing and teach them everything I've taught you? And number three, depend on the Holy Spirit. He goes, I'm with you always. If you do this, I'll do the miracle. I'll save them. I'll heal them. I'll set them free. You just say, come out and the demons will come out. You, if you just be going to say, be healed, I'll heal them. If you just share the good news, I'll build a faith in them and they could get saved. I just need you to depend on me, God says. Just do your part, obey my instructions. Go, teach, and depend. And I promise you this, the disciples in San Bernardino and in your family will increase greatly. That kid, Anthony... I sat by him, gave him the good news of Jesus Christ. And I, I remember sitting down with Anthony. I go, Anthony. And I just touch his head. I go, Anthony, God loves you. He's here right now with you. I'm a pastor of the church, of the way. And I'm going to tell you, if you just call upon the name of the Lord today, you could be forgiven, Anthony. You could be set free. You could receive eternal life right now. It doesn't matter what sins you committed. Jesus died for every one of your sins. At your, one of your sins, you could give your life to Jesus right now. Call on Jesus right now. He'll save you right now. Your salvation is not something you earn. It's a gift. Jesus calls you, and all you have to do is say, yes, I'm here. Give me your life. Forgive me, and he'll do it right now. And I, as soon as I said amen and I prayed with them, the police came. Get away from the body. And I went right, I, I stood up and went on the curb and I talked to Sabrina, the girl that was there. Sabrina didn't know one thing. She saw the whole accident happen and she was an eyewitness. But two hours later, she found out that was her cousin and she didn't know. She called me two hours later, he passed and his mother wants to talk to you. And I talked to the mother, I'll be doing the funeral. But the plant right up the street here, there's people now that believe in Jesus that didn't believe in Jesus because they heard about what 
God did for their friend, that he didn't let their friend, friend die all alone. I'm telling you, if we just go out there and practice love and be available and say, God, use me to make disciples, God will use you to make disciples. And let's start in our home, at our workplace, in our, come on, right here in this church. God said, I'll use you if you just accept the assignment. Is there anybody willing to accept the call of God on your life? Let's all stand up. You guys are awesome. I'll dismiss in just a second. After you eat at a restaurant, some of you guys wait for dessert. What's the dessert menu? Are you full? Well, yeah, well, not too full for a little sweet, sweet snack. And you wait another half hour to get your dessert. If you'd wait for a dessert, wait for someone to get saved today. Come on, church. I just want to start an atmosphere that we love people. We're disciple-making church. And you cannot make disciples if you don't make the call to follow. So Jesus did it simple. And he says, hey, follow me. And you know what that means? About, you know what's so cool about that? Is that God chooses you. He sees value in you. He goes, follow me. Come here. I know you're tired. I know you feel like a failure. I know you've been abused. I know you're hurting. And maybe you're really angry. Come follow me. Let me heal your broken heart. Let me forgive you. But, 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 but Jesus, I'm addicted. That's okay. I set people free. I'm damaged. Okay. I heal. I know you feel like damaged goods because... You were abused when you were a little girl. It seems like it's just followed you for your whole life. And you just become tough because of it. And you've tried to protect yourself and be as strong as you can. But deep down, you're still a little girl hurting. Or a little boy. Just trying to be tough. I'm trying to cover. I don't want to get hurt no more. I understand that. We've all been there. But there's a God that says, I want you. Follow me. He said, but oh, I don't know if I can. God's telling you, you can. You just have to accept the call. He will empower you. He will give you new desires. He will forgive you and give you eternal life. Simple. And eternal life means this. If you were to die like Anthony died last week, it wouldn't be the end of your life. It would be the beginning of your eternity. And that's what would happen. Your best life would be ahead of you. But without Christ, I want you to get this. Sin has already been cursed. Sin is not going to enter heaven. So who goes to heaven? People that have been forgiven. <laughs> By placing their faith in Jesus Christ. The curse, he became. The punishment, he took. So it must be paid for. Because God says, I can't undo the curse. But I could pay the penalty. And I'll send my son, because I love you so much, to take your place. To suffer, die, and pay the consequences for the wrong you've done. So you can be forgiven. You can have eternal life. You just put your faith in me. I'm not offering you religion because religion can't save you. You know what religion offers you? It just offers you some rules that you're going to break. <laughs> Jesus offers you eternal life. Come on. And now he'll help you live a new life, of course. But you don't obey God to be saved. You get saved and then you start obeying God. But it's the beginning of growth, the beginning of your change, the beginning of a new life, the beginning of freedom, the beginning of peace, the beginning of purpose comes with this, saying yes to this. Follow me. And you just need to say yes. And if you say yes, you become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that will be the beginning. You'll be saved immediately. You have eternal life immediately, but you'll start building a life from that point on. And every day, you're going to be growing, becoming happier, more joyful, more powerful, more effective. But it starts with a decision. Pick a new leader. Jesus says, I want to lead you. I love you. One, when I say three, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to make you, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to have you raise your hand. The reason I want you to raise your hand, because Jesus died publicly for you. And if you're going to give your life to Jesus, you need to do this publicly. Like, Jesus, save me. 
Jesus says, if you confess me before men, like before everybody, Jesus says, I'll confess you before my father. But he goes, if you deny me before everybody, I'll have to deny you because you rejected the offer. I'm going to count to three. If you want to be forgiven or Christians, you need to recommit your life to the Lord. You've lost focus on the mission and you've compared yourself with others. You feel hurt, broken, and the sins that you've committed are overwhelming you. And Satan wants to make your failures your identity and it's not you. You are not your failures. God, you are, come on, a child of God. God wants to give you a new identity today. You can have it. One, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you said, be my disciple. If you raise your hand, you're saying yes. Two, this is, you bring your depression, you bring your addiction, you bring your hurt, you bring your sin. God will forgive you. He's not here to judge you. He's here to give you a new life. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three, raise your hands. All this building, I want to be saved. I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you feel it, like I said, that's me. Raise your hand. You're just one. Come on, step away. This is not an accident. It's a choice. I want those to raise their hands. I want you to take one more big step. I want you to leave your seat and come forward. This is your first step of following Jesus. I know it's a big step, but what you're saying, I'm leaving my old life in those seats, and I'm starting a new life of following Jesus. This is your first act, your first step of faith is walking. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're walking towards becoming a disciple of Jesus oh, Christ. Come on, church. Jesus is the one that saves, sets people free, gives people eternal life. Come on, there's still somebody else. There's somebody else right now. You see, like, man, I got to change. And you're thinking, not today, tomorrow. That's the devil speaking to you. It's not the right thought. Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day of a new beginning. Today's your day to follow Jesus. You never know if you have another opportunity. Anthony didn't know. He'd ride his bike from work and that'd be it. He's gone into eternity. Come on, let's give a hand. People are still coming. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there or go up there with you as they're playing this song. Come on up. Your life is one decision away from changing forever. Come on, there's there's children coming up here. Come on, there's come on, mamas, dads, families, husbands, wives, young adults. Come on, they're coming up. Grandpas, mamas. Come on, they're still coming. Someone else. This is your moment. Don't wait. Don't leave here. I should have did it. I should have made that decision. I should have gone forward. I need change in my life. Don't leave here with your depression. Don't leave here with your addiction. Don't leave here with your hopelessness. One step away. He loves you. And I'll tell you this. Not only does he love you, we love you. Pastor, how you gonna love me? You don't even know me. I'll tell you how. Because when I became a believer, God put his love in my heart. So now I love people through the love he's put in my heart and you can do it too God wants to empty your heart of the pain the hurt the anger even sometimes hate self-hatred and give you new life and then fill your heart with what love which is God how do you know a believer when it's all said and done by love okay and some of you need to forgive yourself receive forgiveness and you need to forgive yourself you messed up but you know who hasn't we're all messed up. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. God loves you. And today's the beginning of a new journey. And some of you, I'm going to say this. you fallen. Got an up fallen. Got an up fallen. Got an up fallen. Got an up fallen. Got an up. And I'm going to say this. Good job that you keep getting up. <laughs> I love that. That just shows you're a believer. But today, may this be a day that God sets you free from backsliding. Amen. Do you know God can set you free and heal you from backsliding? That the cycle is broken. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Repeat after me. We're just going to say some words to the Lord. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've done it my way. Save me. 
I believe that you died on a cross and you paid the price for all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. I ask you now to forgive me, save me, and I receive the free gift of eternal life. Make me into a new person. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I am now a child of God and a disciple of Jesus Christ. Today, I make a decision to follow you and your teachings for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me now with your love, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I'm saved and I'm born again. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand now. Everyone here, your next step is to get baptized. We should actually have a huge baptism coming up. Also, everyone that's here, we have sign-ups outside for ministries. Take a walk through the foyer and just, you don't have to sign up today, but, but it would be great if you do. But at least expose yourself to the 100 ministries that we have so you kind of see we have a death ministry, we have a food distribution ministry, we got, I mean, we got all kinds of ministry. We got adopt-the-block ministry, we got ministry for recovery, uh, every, all kinds of ministry, a senior citizen ministry, we got all kinds of ministry. If you need prayers, come up here now. If you want healing, come up here now. You need a breakthrough, come up here now. I want to make sure we got coverage up here. Let's look at everybody, make sure we get the coverage. Oh yeah, Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. And